Hey everybody, welcome back to Durban's Bourbon. I'm Joe. And I'm Josh. Today we're going to be doing a top 10 whiskeys to try before you die. Uh, a bunch of the other YouTube channels, Scotch Test Dummies, Whiskey in the Six, Malted in Montreal. Um, they're doing a sequel as well. We had a one of our subscribers uh, asked the other day, on a comment if we could do that so <clears throat> I said actually as we commented back and forth I said absolutely that is a fantastic idea um, we're definitely gonna do it. it'll probably be the next video which it is this one um, and I'm gonna do a shout out to you here in a minute was that, was uh, that whiskey music it was I believe it was whiskey music that Look that me, um big old look brain. At, you remembered yeah. uh, I have this <clears throat> amazing uh, was it? It was whiskey music, wasn't it? I think that's what you said. I don't know. I don't pay attention. Anyways, we were yeah. talking about doing. A lot of people are doing um, uh, some whiskeys that uh, are, I don't know, kind of more expensive, or because there's so many out there. Uh, I think a lot of ours are on the on the vein of or the page of where it's affordable, it's available, but they're good good whiskeys. Um, and we got a couple on there that probably are almost unattainable. But uh, as far as trying a lot of different whiskeys that you, you can't afford, I haven't. I don't right. think. There's a few, but I haven't. You know, there's like, I don't know, you got like the Lafroy 32 yeah. years. Touch. Like those At things are just way out of our price range. Probably about most of yours. So we um, kind of came up with a list. We had five we agreed on. And then we got kind of five separate um so basically we have our own list of 10, but we agreed on five of the same were in there. Yeah. I made a list and Josh made a list. And then we looked at both our lists and we're like, hey, we hit these five. We both agreed. So we put a separate little five solid that both of us agree on. Then we're branching out. So you actually, y'all get kind of a f extra five bonus yeah. maybe, I guess you could say from our opinions. Yeah. And thank you for picking up for me while I was looking at the phone like a young person or something because yeah, you're I just, super young I, I just really wanted to make sure that we gave the shout out it was whiskey music the brainiac yeah. here remembered yeah, uh so thank, thank you <laughs> it is thanks whiskey music that was a great um recommendation mm -hmm. you may have been seeing the other channels and saw they were doing it and said hey i'd like durban's bourbon to do it and see what their opinions are so coming at you yeah um Oh, we'll go off our five. You want to do our five yeah, that we the agree five on? five first, and then we'll kind of branch off. And um, We both hit on, and this isn't in a por importance, like the one first one we tell you about isn't the first right. one. It's There's no, no rhyme or order. reason. No order. Just the <clears> part. <throat> right. And it's like, like I was saying earlier, there's so many that could be on this list. It's, it's hard to narrow it down to 10. And then, um, so we're just, agree. yeah, we're, this is just our, our 10. And it could change next week. You know, you just, you're, Right. Your your uh, palate changes and things mm -hmm. change and sometimes yep. whiskeys change a little bit and don't taste the same to you. So. Right, that's true. Anyways, here's our ten. Um, we hit Makers Forty Six, and we both agreed on that. <clears throat> and comparing it, comparing it to the regular Makers, we both feel very strongly. I think it is a more unique product because of the several month finishing and the French oak staves. I think it gives it that extra character that makers, the plain makers, doesn't have in it. So if you're a, a makers and, and you enjoy it, the 46 is just an incredible improvement. Not really improvement, but nuance. So it it's my favorite in the makers line. Oh, for sure. All and it, and uh, it's readily available. <clears throat> you can get it pretty much anywhere. Um, and the price point's good. I think it's, it's under $40. Oh. So, <laughs> <coughs> yep, he's under 40 because he's old. I got a cold again. I've, that's ridiculous. So, Maker's 46. Yep. Great, great bourbon. Yep. Uh, pick Henry, it up if you can. Absolutely. Henry McKenna, Bottle, Bottle and Bond. Bond. Yes. Bottle and Bond, 100 proof, four years minimum. Uh, just won a bunch of awards, didn't it? Just last won. Year? Yeah, it did. A bunch of awards. It's becoming really scarce right now i don't think that's going to last 
personally, I don't. Um, it is still fairly available. Price point is very reasonable. Yeah. It was around 32, I think it had a price no, jump. It, yeah, it was it like- It used to be 27, 28. I think it was, right, yeah, right at the <clears throat> end of the 20s, and yeah. then now it's like 35. 30, but yeah, so had a little bit of- They did win awards. A, but we it, always knew all along. We, we've been yeah. drinking it, and it's so good. Yep. And I was trying to collect a few because I was like, I think something weird's gonna happen, and I uh, was right, yeah. it did, unfortunately. Good for them, bad for the consumers out there. But it is available, so. Yeah. And it's, like you said, it's a bottle and bond <clears throat> bourbon, great flavor, lots of vanilla. Yes, um, caramel, vanilla. It's just got those classic solid bourbon and it's characteristics. And it's got an age statement, it's 10 year old. Yep, absolutely. So. Can't go wrong with that one. Um, we both also agreed on the Pappy 20. Um, Super easy to get, <laughs> readily available. Yeah. No, it is not, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, but. <laughs> Excuse me, <coughs> Dan gone cough. I had well, I had the twenty what f- God, four or five it's years. It's been four ago. or five years. So ago. I haven't had it. I had it to get it at a at a. We got it at a bar, and it was. At, we we had all three. We had the fifteen, the twenty, and the twenty three, mm-hmm. and we both agreed that the twenty out of the three <sighs> was the best one, and that was back then. I haven't had it since, but mm-hmm. since then I just remember it was one of my favorite bourbons and. Right. I don't know if the label made it that way. You know, if, if I actually right. had a bottle, How I could much taste is hype it. Yeah, and... but it's one of those ones. It's kind of a unicorn. Um, if you can get it, you know, you, our state has a lottery, so I've never won any of the. I don't even have any of the antique collection in mine. No. So, um, but it should be available. But that's in your one of those bars. ones. If you can try that before you die, <clears throat> yeah. If you're at a bar and you see it, it'd probably be pretty pricey, but yeah. it's, gonna it's a be good probably... one to say you had. 50 to 75 bucks, I think, is a going price for a port. It might even be closer oh, to 100 yeah, now. Yeah, probably. Uh, back in the day, I think the, the, the uh, 23 is over I was two. in Park City. They had, um, I think, just the 12 was like 50 bucks a port. That's just because it had the name on it. Right. That heavy, heavy <clears throat> and Winkle name. So it's probably pricey wherever yeah. you're at. Yeah. But it's delicious. That's probably one of our rarer ones. Yes. Off. That's by far probably the rarest one on our list. Yeah. Because we're trying to get ones, you know, like we said <clears throat> earlier, that you can afford or that you can come across. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blanton's, we both agreed. Mm. The history behind Blanton's with Elmer T. Lee creating the first single barrel bourbon uh, in 1984. Just the depth of history from the distillery um, and the icon that Elmer T. is and the history behind it and the care. That's a great bourbon. Solid, solid flavored bourbon. Mm. Readily available. Price is around 60. I think it's hovering about 58 or so. Something like that. Um, so price is affordable uh, and it's accessible. Yeah. So that's a really good one. Mm-hmm. If you haven't, I mean, if you're watching this, you probably tried it maybe, but right. um, it's it's really good bourbon. Yep. And the last one Ooh, is an Irish, Irish that we both agreed on um, was Yellow Spot. It is so good. It is. And it has a great. Uh, the way it's matured, they finish it with bourbon casks, and then the other cask that's finished is, um, I believe it was the Malaga, wasn't it? Was Something it? like that. Um, it's a 12-year Irish. Uh, sherry yeah, bourbon, and sherry, and Malaga. <laughs> Look at you. And it's non-chill filtered. <coughs> yes. And so it's it's got the best. It's got the best mix of the bourbon all flavor. Of them. And then that good Irish flavor, and it just, they, it's just. It's, it's, it's very, it's they accompany, they complement each other right. very, very well. Um, you get the bourbon influence, the Malaga, a little bit of that red fruitish kind of flavor, and then that, the, all the green apple and typical Irish. Yes. It's just all married together. Not, very, and then you get the vanilla, you already said yep, the vanilla and I all didn't, that stuff. I didn't, but it is. It's just an incredible Irish, and Irishes are very light and fruity anyway this just gives you if you're a bourbon drinker it gives you a little bit of bourbon (laughs) sometimes maybe (laughs) so there's five that we agreed on or that we we made a list and those those five right were on both our lists so we just figured we'd go over those first and then now branch off into another five so we each have ten yeah and you guys get an extra five in your yeah sure why not so we should do 20 yeah Let's keep droning on <laughs> and fall asleep to this <coughs> yeah. 
Excuse me. Or you can keep coughing. I can so keep my coughing. Uh, one of my next ones, um, I I really like the George T. Stag. That's part of the antique collection, though, which is also hard to get. It's like um, kind of like the Pappies in that same vein. Um, but it is one of my favorites. It's such a good bourbon. It's got all those characteristics. I think, what is it, 14 to 17 years old or something? Yeah, I don't... It, it, so it's older, so it's got the the heavier on the oak, but it's not over-oaked. Like, kind of like the Pappy 23 is, like, almost over-oaked. Like, there's, right. there's almost... It becomes kind much, of astringent. Yeah. And... So um, that's one of mine. And then if you can't... The Georgie Stag, if you can't get that, there's the Stag Junior, which is also very good. It's just, it's not it's not as good, but it's a... Um, isn't it a barrel proof? I think the Stag uh, Junior. It is, so, and it's readily available. Yeah, and that for the that one part. that one you can find. Um, typically, you can find that. Uh, so if you can get that, I pick that up. Um, that has a lot of the same characteristics as the George T Stag, but the George T Stag is um, it's a great product and a high proof. Yes, the Stag Junior usually the average proof. I have several from several years. The average proof is usually running about one hundred and thirty two right. proof. Uh, the stag, the big stag from the bubble oak trace. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's usually coming in up there to 128. Yeah. I think the one I have is 128 proof. So they're up there. Yep. Um, <clears throat> rolling over to my list on mine, I happen to be sipping it right now. Me it's too. Old Forester 1910. In the lineup of the Old Foresters, you have the pre prohibition. You have, oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, the pre-prohibition bottle and bond original batch. Um, it's a statesman. We don't have. We haven't we had a statesman. Have an, I had one a while back. Oh, the, it's one of the regular bottles. Yeah, yeah. Um, we drank it. I never replaced it. Not that it wasn't good or anything, but of the lineup of them, the nineteen ten is one of my favorite bourbons to sip on, hands down. Uh, the way they mature it and finish it with the double aged. Uh, over charred oak barrel so they age it in a barrel for a regular old probably number four char then after that they dump it into a heavily heavily charred barrel that almost is compromised it's so charred and they age it for a predetermined amount of time to get that deep rich color and that barrel char flavor over without being over oaked and it's just a wonderful creation that they have the history behind it is very neat because they had a fire in 1910, which caused them on the barrel bottling line. It's a whole thing. You can read about it because we have quite a bit to go over. Um, but flavor and everything, I love it. It's probably one it's of my favorites. very good. And it Sweet. is readily available. Yeah. Again, it did limit. Uh, last year when they released their yearly stock, they sold out in three months because people realized what an incredible flavor profile it had and how good it was. They bought it up. So... Uh, Brown's Foreman has now released uh, this year's quantity should cover the entire year they're hoping so fingers crossed we'll see uh, we'll see about that <clears throat> all right then my uh, let's see which one else do I want to go over so the next one for me probably would be like these aren't in any order but the Teeling single grain which is another Irish uh, it's it's a non-chill filtered single grain Irish whiskey and it's just bursting with flavor. As far as a lot of Irish is, have a very tame, fruity kind of, kind of roughly the same flavor a little bit. But the, the, the Teeling single grain just has, it, it's just, like I said, it's bursting with flavor. It's got those floral notes, you know, it's, it's, it's like an Irish whiskey elevated. Um, for Irish whiskeys, I'd say Yellow Spot's probably my favorite that I've had so far. I'm sure there's, there's probably better ones out there. I don't know that I can't afford, but the Teeling is a close <clears> second. <throat> the single grain is a close second. Even the Teeling, the other, um, what's the other one? Oh, the uh, small batch. Small batch. That's good too, but that single grain, it's it's <laughs> it's a it's a great product. It's readily available, thirty five to forty bucks, I think, where we live, <laughs> and. Uh, <clears throat> So if you can find that, pick it up. It's, a, it's a, especially if you like Irish whiskeys. It's a great Irish whiskey, and it's like forty six percent alcohol. A little, it's a, it's a yeah, higher non chill filtered. Love anything non chill filtered. Mm -hmm. um, Get the truest version, right? Of it. 
Uh, so that's my next one is the T-Link single grain. And then moving on for my other would be Weller 12. I'm going to, I'm going to cheat and throw two in here. It's either the Weller 12 or the 107. Uh, the 107 for us used to be completely readily available. Oh, it was in staple. every liquor store and everything at around 26 bucks a bottle. Uh, the Weller 12, even back in the day, was allocated for our state. So I would, um, I would, I, I would call the liquor stores, and they would always set bottles aside for me to pick up, um, which I greatly appreciate. And now you can't do that anymore. It's become a lottery bourbon. The 107 isn't a lottery bourbon. It's available again, but the big wigs put their brains together and said we can get a whole lot more for this and so they do and it went up to 59 dollars a bottle for the 107 so it was a drastic drastic um, increase <coughs> both if you can try them and these are before you die um, you should be able to try both of those in most of your bars if they're a really if they're a well-stocked bar they're going to have those at least the 107 it is a great, great whiskey, weeded whiskeys, and the popularity came because they are the similar mash bills or same mash bills as the Van Winkles. So with that said, that's that's one of mine to go for. I you. agree on that too. The, the Weller products are always really good. They're just, now they're, like the 107 is like 50 bucks now. I just yeah. don't, it's good, but it's, I don't know. $50 whiskey in my opinion although I still have two bottles of it but the, the Weller 12 is amazing but I, I mean, we haven't seen it in forever mm -hmm. now it's, it's been a yeah, while it's kind of uh, it's almost it's easy so it's, it's hard to get as like a pappy so yeah um, anyways uh, I agree on <coughs> that. Uh, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go I haven't done any scotch yet huh? I'm gonna go with my um, my absolute favorite scotch Ardbeg 10 it's everywhere. It's easy to get, and it's it's just a delicious, heavily peated, well-rounded scotch in my opinion. I just I love everything about it. It's it's got earthy notes. It's got like I said, heavily peated, so it's like a smoky beach campfire. You know, you get the iodine, you get yeah, the camp floral fire. notes too. It's 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 for me. It's just such a well-rounded, but yet it's still got. I feel like it's young enough. It still has that punch of like a, a very hearty whiskey. Uh, so for me, it's probably well. I, I like so many scotches, but like it's 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 if I had a staple that I because it's always available. If if I could get that all the time or have it all the time, I would. Um, as far as uh, something that is just almost like a table bourbon, but it's not cheap. I mean, it's probably in the fifty to sixty dollar range. I think. So it's not super cheap, but it is, it's a very delicious Isla Scotch, heavily peated. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's one of my favorites. It's probably my favorite, but I just, I don't know. I just go back and forth. Sometimes I like the... Right. Lafroy. Yeah. So, or sometimes I like the ones that aren't peated and they're right. delicious too. So, um, but for me, if you haven't, if you're getting into Scotch or you like, you've tried some... I don't know, maybe some blends like Johnny Walker Black and you kind of like that smokiness, pick up an Ardbeg 10 and you will be blown away how good it is. It's non-chill filtered. Um, it's just a great product. Mm -hmm. I agree opinion, with that so. too. The Ardbegs are hard to beat. Um, then we're going to roll on my on my side of the fence, a Scotch Glen Farkless 12 or the 21. Both are very readily available. The 12 is around 60 bucks, I think. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> and the 21 is around a hundred um hundred plus 120 or 130 100. yeah i think i bought mine on vacation i spent more than it sh i should have when i looked at our own states i was like i paid about 30 bucks more than i should have um but you're on vacation so who cares yeah that money um, doesn't count no and the 21 does have a different flavor it's 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 more it's the 12 uh, only more well-rounded and smoother and uh, it's just both are exceptional for scotches they take a little bit of water well um, interesting enough they take ice very well too it brings out some nuances that a lot of other scotches 
don't have. And you eat your chocolate on that one. I get chocolate on it. That's absolutely and I correct. Do too. I do too. I, <clears throat> I also like the Glenn Fark list, but for you, it's higher up in your chain yeah. of... Mm -hmm. um, yep. If you're out there searching. Uh, uh, anything on these lists is going to be good. Yeah. I'm not going to tell can't you something go wrong. that's not good. Um, unless it's not your... Uh, particular taste yet like i said if some if you don't like scotch yet then I yeah. mean, we were bourbon guys forever i mean for years right. like i don't i'm not drinking scotch that. stuff right, right. now i'd love it so yeah um, anyways uh <clears throat> so then now i'm gonna do i'm gonna switch a little bit we haven't done a rye no. I, my favorite rye as of this moment is pikesville rye i don't know exactly where it's out of Oh, it's not Canadian. I think it's American. no. I think it's, it's Pennsylvania. Kentucky. Is it Pennsylvania? I think Pikesville's. I don't even know what I'm talking uh -huh. about. But anyways, Pikesville <clears throat> is it, right now, hands down, my favorite rye whiskey. It's about fifty, sixty bucks, I think. Yeah, it's a and to spinny. me, well worth it. Like there's there's so much complexity to it. Uh, it's got that good rye hit to it, um, but it's also got a lot of the vanillas and stuff that you get with a bourbon. Um, but as far as rise go, that is, it is just, it's just really good. Um, if you can find, I, I, it's, it's around here all the time. So I'm mm -hmm. sure it's around everywhere. It's one of those ones that you should pick up and have in your collection. Um, give it a try and you will be pleasantly surprised. And it was first produced in Maryland. Oh, Maryland. So it's a wow. Maryland, uh, one of the last, Interesting. uh, standing Maryland rise, uh, I guess I should read the bottle more often. Yeah. I just picked it up because I, I can't remember. I, I saw a review or read a review about it, and I'm like, oh, I'll give it a try. And I, because Rittenhouse was my ride, my go-to rye. Absolutely. Both um, of ours. Yeah. And know. Rittenhouse is a good rye, too. Um, but more for, like, I would say, not, it's not necessarily a sipper, more for making drinks and stuff. Yeah. I think it's a better. It's, it's a decent yeah. sipper, but Pikesville's, you know, it's not like Kentucky Owl as far as that's like a hundred and something. <clears throat> You know, what, 120 bucks for Kentucky Owl? Yeah, it's 120. It's spendy. Yeah. It's 11 year rye. Pikesville is a six year rye. Right, but Pikesville's um, so got. So I mean, it's got, it's got the flavors you <laughs> want in a rye, but it's also it's uh, it's well rounded. Um, it's, I'm not it's a rye a good, drinker, and I found it probably one of my favorite yeah, flavored good, ryes to it's a drink. Good rye. So that was my <clears> next <throat> one. Um, rolling over to my side, this is kind of one of those. It's a spendy scotch. Um, I really like, and it's not the name because I've, I've drank it, and I've tried it blind once. The Johnny Walker Blue. It is expensive. It's around two and a quarter a bottle. It is readily available. You could go into any bar if they're a decently stocked bar and they're going to have it. The price for a pour is probably going to be pretty reasonable, as that goes. It's not going to be the astronomical hundred dollars you're probably going to get a poor pretty reasonable really yeah <coughs> i believe so <clears throat> um it's a blend it's the top of the food chain in the johnny walker uh portfolio and i love all the johnny walkers i love the green i agree uh with josh he had it on his list i think you scratched it though i didn't did you? to get the top um, 10 but the green is really good but the, I, yeah the blue is the best one I think it has the green is so good. it is and I just preferred the blue just because it is so smooth every time I've tried it it's just a very comforting smooth easy sipping uh, scotch and they do an exceptional job at that blend uh, so hey, who, that's who got you that for your birthday i would be this guy here that's right. for my 50th birthday yeah. so and I have I always some, give gifts that I can partake in, and that one a, I have. That's a wise man <laughs> right there. So that would be a before you die. Yeah, you're gonna hear everybody and their grandma talk about Johnny Walker Blue, Johnny Walker Blue. Yeah, it is a big hyped scotch, but that would be one to try before you die. For I sure. definitely think so. Yeah. Where are you at on your list? I'm my last one. My okay. last one is another scotch. Um, <clears throat> that's another one that's readily available. This one's uh, over on the Highland side, I think. It's not Space Side, right? It's Highland. Yeah. Glenlivet. Yep. Glenlivet, the Glenlivet 15, which you have as well. I do too, so um, I'm going to scratch it. Uh, 
so the Glenn Levitt 15 from all the ones that well, he has got up to the 25, which the 25 is incredible, but that's expensive. Right. And, you know, we're trying to, I'm, I'm trying to be in the vein of, you know, you, you don't, you can't spend a ton of money on booze. So, you know, you want stuff that's readily available that tastes really good. And Glenn Levitt 15 is one of my favorites in that lineup. It, it really, I like it better than the 18. Uh, the 21 and 25, I think, are better than the 15, but the 15 is readily available, and it's always around, and it's not expensive. Yep. And well, I don't know. Is, they just 50. had a they had a price increase, so it's hovering around 68. Bucks yeah. Now. So so now, it's, so 60 to 70 bucks on that, but um, it's got all those fruity <laughs> notes. It's finished in the <coughs> cherry cast French right? oak. French oak. It's finished with the French oak, so it gives that wine characteristic. That's what it is. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I know I like it. <laughs> uh, so, that's one that I would say, if you can, if you find it and you like, especially if you like the Highland Scotches and those, that's a really good one and it's affordable and it, it is a, it's a delightful treat. Um, I don't know much more about it as far as, I mean. It's a 15 year yeah, I know French oak yeah. stave. That's about, I mean, Highland Scotch. Yeah, it's Glen Livet. It's a huge brand. That's what I'm saying. It's, yep. it's everywhere. So Readily if you available. Can, if you can try, I would say that would be one to definitely try before you die. Yep. And I had Glen Livet in my little list, but then I just scratched it because I had the 15 and 21. So moving on to my last one. And I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this American whiskey. Comes out of Oregon. It's McCarthy's. Uh, McCarthy's pot still whiskey and I was it's so sweet. incredibly impressed with it I'm gonna throw a shout out um, it's pot distilled the craftsmanship that goes into that whiskey blew me away they import the malted barley from Scotland the amount of care that goes into that product is amazing you could close your eyes and it tastes like you're drinking scotch yeah you would, and you would be able to tell it's super good. Yep, and you can't call it a scotch because it's made in America, so it's just American whiskey, but it is amazing. And I don't know about the availability. Uh, there for a while, it was readily available in our area, then our state, for whatever reason, the decided. So maybe yeah, they decided they distribute out. how far-reaching it is. But if it's not in your area and you can try it in a bar, I would recommend it, especially if you're a scotch drinker and you like peat, try this next to an Ardbeg or something and you're gonna be amazed that that us Americans can produce a product that so closely resembles it and you can tell the care that goes into it. So when you're I not, had to put that You're one not on a there. huge peat fan and you really <clears throat> like it. And I, I do. I'm a, I really love the peated whiskeys. And I really like it. So yeah. it's got it's got a little bit of everything in it. Yeah. You know, and it's it's definitely it's definitely on the peated side. Oh absolutely. But it's not it's not like an Ardbeg or Lafroig or, <clears throat> no. or it's even softer. Vagabolin. Yeah, it's 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 a good whiskey <clears throat> for sure. I have a couple bottles. Yeah. Sure yep. do. So that about does our list. Uh top ten plus. Top ten plus. Whiskeys to so try, I mean, there's right? So many, but. And like Josh said, you know, these are just ones that we've all tried these or have them in our collections, and we didn't want to go off on. I'd like to have a 1926 right. something pre-prohibition. Everybody'd like to try that. If you're a whiskey drinker, you want those ones that you can't find pre-prohibition whiskeys. I hope 30, to try one. Forty-year-old you yeah. know. This. But everything that we told you all about. Uh, you can get, if you can't purchase it for your own collection, you should be able to do a little bit of hunting and find it in your bars, um, which is kind of fun. You can kind of go whiskey hunting and have a opinion you're trying to find this particular whiskey and try it and spend a little money and, and, and give it a whirl. Yeah. Like when you're on vacation, because that money doesn't count. <clears throat> doesn't count at all. So smart. <laughs> so uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, whiskey music we hope you enjoy it as well and you get some ideas on stuff you would like to try before you buy and this one is for you so yeah thanks um, for the uh not advice recommendation recommendation there yeah. you go so uh remember to hit the like button subscribe yep. share us with your friends 
have a dram with us. What else? Anything else it. you can think? Thanks for watching. Yes. We appreciate it. Yep. And and subscribing. So we're growing slowly. We're, we're having fun. So remember, as always, enjoy your whiskeys and bourbons any, any way, way you like. like. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Still going.